What's going on guys? Gast here giving you a little analysis of the new banner. Um, probably not going to be anything that no one has discovered for themselves yet, but I kind of wanted to give my thoughts on it just because uh, I really have fun making these sorts of videos and you know, just saying my thoughts out there and I guess developing my understanding of the game even more. So I'm going to try to uh, talk about these characters and stuff like that and we'll see how it goes. So we have Nephany first. So uh, Nephany is the first character, and the first thing that comes to mind is how fitting her her her, cla her, her stats are. So the first thing that comes to mind with Nephany is how fitting her skills are as a Halberdier. And if you haven't played Path of Radiance or Radiant Dawn, uh, Halberdiers were essentially like Spearmasters of Fates, uh, in the sense that they had a high crit chance, and they were all about offense and stuff like that. Uh, and Nephany was uh, pretty powerful when it came to the offensive delivery, although in, in Path of Radiance I think she was pretty overrated, but she is a huge fan favorite. A lot of people like Nephany. Similar reasons for why they like Ike is because he's like this normal guy. Uh, Nephany, despite looking like a princess, is from like the backwater. Uh, with Brom in uh, chapter 11 of Path of Radiance, I think, where they free the Crimean uh, prisoners and then they recruit um, Nephany, Brom, and Kirin. And Nephany is a really sort of country girl. Uh, Donal is, I, I would say, quite an inspiration of Nephany uh, because Nephany and Brom speak like they have that really uh, country twang. Um, and I was sort of hoping that they would translate into the voice acting of Nephany, but I mean, it's only one line, so maybe there's more about it, but Nephany was all about the twang, at least in my opinion, when it when it came to her. Now, Slaying Lance is something that we saw uh, coming in with the screenshots, um, which I think is quite fitting for her because it has to do with her being like a, a, a critical machine. And, and then she has Moonbow, so she gets the cooldown minus one, so essentially Moonbow has a one charge, as a one, uh, a one cool, a one charge for the special. Attacks in speed plus two is uh, pretty helpful for her. Although, um, if we, if you really wanted to capitalize on her offensive capability, because that's basically what she's all about, uh, then I'd say Fury or Death Blow itself would just be a better call. Um, and I say that because Wrath. Uh, is just so good in combination with the Slaying Lance and Moonbow because Wrath essentially is, if your HP is equal to or below 75%, you get a cooldown of minus one, uh, which means that um, you essentially can already proc Moonbow per turn because you're getting the cooldown from minus one and then if Wrath procs, you get another cooldown, which means you're basically ready to proc Moonbow all the time. Uh, and if you hit with Moonbow, then you are getting a plus 10 damage from the special. You know, this combination of her basically makes her proc Moonbow and then add plus 10 damage each time. Uh, which I think is just, she's just an offensive powerhouse in those regards. But I think attack and speed uh, plus 2 is something that you can probably get away with. Uh, and, and replace it with something else that's more dedicated to her being uh, more of a powerhouse. So maybe Fury to really get just get plus four instead of plus two, um, and just deal all the all as much damage as you can on offense. So she can probably terrorize uh, on the offensive phase. Her her skills are all about just dealing as much damage as possible. So she's really heavy on the attack. Um, and similar to how she was in Path of Radiance, where her defense and her HP was pretty crappy, but she was mostly all about offense. So I find her kit is really good, and I really like how it represents her well. And she even comes with Wrath in Path of Radiance as a personal skill too. So they really nailed it with Nephany. I'm really, I'm really good. To see, I'm really happy to see they paid such uh, a good attention to detail about her. And there's Agile Horseman, Oscar. I like his voice a lot. I like his artwork a lot. His inclusion in the game in the first place is kind of bizarre. And I, his stats. Okay, so at first glance, he kind of reminds me of Sully, except he can cover more bases. Uh, but I find Sully has a more practical um, kit because she has drawback, uh, which I find is pretty helpful just as a movement thing um, to get people out of the way. <clears throat> now they both have Sapphire Lance Plus. Um, but the thing is, the difference between Sully and Oscar is that Sully has uh, Swordbreaker, but Oscar has Lancebreaker. So, um, he has more covers. He can cover lances and swords naturally. Uh, and he also has Spur, Speed, and Defense too, which I don't really think is going to do anything. I feel like people are just going to pick other other skills for him, especially if he's a Cavalier. Um, I don't really think his assist skill or his C skill are that good. His kit really isn't anything special in my opinion. So I'm I'm hoping that he's just really beefy. Like he has a lot of skill like he has a lot of offensive capability to pull off covering lances and um 
swords. Uh, that's my hope for him. Aside from that, I don't really think his kit's that good. I think his inclusion in the game is kind of peculiar to begin with. Uh, another horse unit that doesn't, that for me, he doesn't really provide anything special. Um, but, you know, he comes with lances. He's a lance, he's a lance cavalier in the game, so, uh, I guess that's that. <laughs> um, yeah, Oscar's inclusion, uh, I don't really know. I don't really know how I feel about it. I kind of wish there were other characters that instead took it. Maybe Gautry for a lance, uh, knight, or, um... Shinon for an archer. I mean, there's other. It feels like the the the, the thing they're looking for are a special on the Grail mercenaries, uh, and then there's the only person who the only mercenaries who are left would be um, uh, Gautry, Shinon, and um, Boyd. Uh, I think Boyd would be a pretty cool in entrance to the game. Uh, he would be quite offensive. He'd be essentially like um, Nephany if she was wearing an axe instead. Uh, but I think there's there's already there's definitely already axe users that are like that uh, in the in the game already. But um, Shinon or I wish I kind of hope that they were in too. But I mean, we have Oscar. Uh, I kind of I dig Oscar in the in the main campaign. He's okay. Um, he has good supports with uh, Tenneth, so that's cool. Not really good supports with Ike or anything. He's just an odd inclusion for me. So I'm hoping that his stats are really strong uh, to make up for his you know. Especially relative to the to the whole banner, not that great of a kit. Anyways, let's keep going. And the lost princess. Ooh, Lincia. I love this kit a lot. So um, first of all, Lincia is one of my favorite characters in Path of Radiance. I already talked about that in the podcast yesterday. Um, and I think her skills are, again, really fitting for her character. She has Amity, which was her legendary sword. It was the Crimean Royal Sword. Uh, and it had a brave effect in itself uh, in the game. And this one is minus two speed of a, of, a, of a debuff instead of a five. And it's more powerful. So a crazy good weapon. Um, really great. Ardent Sacrifice is uh, an homage to her being also a healer. She was a sword healer. In um, in Path of Radiance 2, which was pretty good, uh, Death Blow and uh, Flyer Formation. So as a flyer, uh, she can fly to any other adjacent. She can fly to another flyer uh, within two spaces. So um, she has a, a big movement buff with a flyer team. So if she's with a flyer emblem team and she has flyer formation, she can. She has a lot of movement options, uh, which even adds on to the craziness of flyers being able to move everywhere. So that's pretty great for her. Um, I don't know if people are going to stick with Arden Sacrifice because I can't imagine her having a lot of HP to begin with um, just because uh, she has Death Blow and Amity and she's kind of frail in the game. So um, maybe they're going to give her a high HP stat. I don't really know. I don't think they will. Um, then again, you can't really call these things until you actually play them. Uh, I really like her kit. She has a very meta kit. <laughs> she has Death Blow and a Brave Weapon. So... Uh, She's probably going to just be completely offense-based. And Flyer Formation, that'll help her maneuver and get into the fray even more so. Or even get back out of the fray even more so. So she has a lot of things going on for her. She can be a pretty good pinch healer if she can use Flyer Formation and Ardent Sacrifice with a Flyer Emblem team. Um, I, I know what, in fact, I kind of like it when she has Ardent Sacrifice then. Because then she can she can sort of, uh, if there's a damage, like if Valter's hurt or something, and then he fly, and she flies over to Valter and heals him up when she's too far away. So... She, I like how she can effectively double as um, a healer and a sword user. A very efficient sword user at that. Um, I'm excited to use her. I really hope I pick her up. I think she's going to be great for the game. I really love her kit. I think it fits really well with her character in Path of Radiance. So this is so this is interesting. This is That map is, uh, I think, this map is um, has to do with actually Alincia, really, because uh, this is the Crimean capital. Um, and that in the middle thing is where you fought Bryce, I think. So, um, that's, you know, this is a map in Path of Radiance, one of the last maps. Um, and this is a different map from the, from the, from the CYL thing. So I'm assuming that there might be a Tempest trial that have to do with the Black Knight. Um, but I was thinking about this over and people were like confused as to why there would be a three banner a three character banner, and I'm assuming, and this is just a guess for me, um, that if there would be a Tempest Trial, they would have to have three characters in this banner to begin with, um, only because 
If there is four characters, like Ike, Soren, Mist, and Titania, who are the four Path of Radiance characters we first got, and then there was Sanaki, but she wasn't even playable in Path of Radiance, and then you have Alencia, Brave Ike, Oscar, and um, uh, Nephany. So you have eight characters from that are playable from Path of Radiance, uh, and then uh, including Brave Ike. So if they did a Tempest Trial, I think I just repeated myself, I think that's the eight characters they'd want. And I don't think Sanaki would matter because she was a weird inclusion in the game in the first place. She wasn't even playable in Path of Radiance. Um, so that's just a theory of mine. I don't really know because I'm usually wrong about predictions for Fire Emblem Heroes anyway. But that's kind of my guess. But that being said, guys, this is definitely going to be a pretty exciting time. Uh, I'm pretty stoked to try to get uh, Elencia. And I hope you guys enjoy this analysis. Um, maybe you learned something about the game that you didn't know before. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Deuces.